Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. In this tutorial I will walk you through how to make oven gloves. This is a fantastic beginner friendly project and I have a free pattern available on my website. Now let's get sewing! To complete today's project you will need cotton or linen fabric. I would highly recommend using more heavyweight sturdy fabric so your oven mitts can last longer and you don't burn through the fabric easily. However, because I wanted to mix different prints and use up my scraps, I'm using quite lightweight fabric today. So I decided to use some woven interfacing and fuse it to the back of the fabric first, just to give it a little bit of more stability. You will also need heat reflective fleece to make sure you don't burn your hands. If like me you want to quilt your fabric, you might need some marking tools and a ruler to draw those lines. A seam repair is always good to have on hand in case if something goes wrong. You'll need some snips, scissors and some pins and clips to hold your fabric in place. Whenever I'm quilting my fabric, I like to cut the fabric and the fleece larger than the pattern piece. So first I quilt the fabric and then I would cut individual pattern um, so I don't have to worry about fabric shifting, moving or shrinking uh, while I'm quilting it. Also, if you don't have enough fabric, you can join two different pieces together to create one larger piece, like I've done here. I made a little line here so I know where is my seam and then I have enough fabric around so I can cut that piece later on. Whenever you are working with fleece like this, you need to pay attention to the right and wrong side. So one side is this metallic shiny side and the other side is more plain. The metallic side is the side that will reflect the heat away from your body, which means that whenever you are quilting it to your external pieces, the metallic side need to face the wrong side of your external fabric. Once you've completed your quilting and you have your external fabric quilted to your fleece, you're going to cut the main body as mirror images, as you see here. So when you put them right sides together, they are exactly the same. And then again, you're going to do that from your lining fabric. So cut two pieces as mirror images. And lastly, you'll need to cut one loop from your external fabric. Take your loop and fold it along the long edge in half just like that so the wrong sides are facing each other press that flat there we go then you're going to open it and we're going to fold those longer edges towards that crease in the middle and then press it with an iron there we go and then repeat that on the other side now you're going to fold it in half along that initial first crease. If you want, you can clip that in a couple of places. And then you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch along each side about two millimeters from the edge. Okay, once you've got that stitched, you're going to fold the loop in half, just like that. If you want, you can just base that in place. Otherwise, take one of the external pieces and we're going to place it along that straighter edge here. So right side facing up, you're going to place it. And I like to measure about three centimeters from the top. Here we go. And you can just clip that in place. Okay, we're going to base that in place and then we're going to proceed to the next step. Now you're going to take your external pieces and place them right sides together. Line them up along all edges. And then we're going to clip it around all sides except the top straight edge. If you are new to sewing curves, it might be easier if you draw a line about one centimeter from the edge. This will be your stitching line. So you can use that line as a guide. I just like to draw my line just at that point here so I know where to stop. Now you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew the seam 
all around apart from the top edge using one centimeter seam allowance. Now take your scissors and you're going to snip inside that corner here as close as you can get to the stitching line. So when I'm at the machine I like to just double or triple stitch around that area just to strengthen the seam. So take your scissors and carefully just cut it straight as close as you can get to the stitching line without actually cutting the stitches. Just like that as you see and now you're going to trim the seam allowance by half around the entire glove put this aside for a second now you're going to take your lining pieces and we're going to repeat the steps so place both of your lining pieces right sides together we're going to sew the seam again using one centimeter seam allowance however along that long straight edge here we're going to leave a big opening so you can just mark it with your pen so you don't forget it So now what I like to do is to press my seam allowance open just around that opening so it's easier for me to line it up the edges when I need to close the opening. Now you can again snip inside that corner here as close to the seam as possible and then trim the seam allowance by half but leave the full seam allowance around the opening. Once you have your lining and external pieces ready, you're going to turn the lining right side out. Then you're going to line it up inside the external piece. So make sure you have your thumb on the same side on the external piece and the lining piece, just like that. And then you're going to insert that lining inside. And we're going to line up that top row edge. So line up your side seams and you can clip everything around. There we go, just like that. So you have your lining inside. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch around that opening using one centimeter seam allowance. Once you have that stitch, you're going to pull the lining outside. You can pull that little thumb as well, so it's everything, so everything lays nice and flat. Then you're going to fold that lining on top of your external pieces and line it up along those two curved edges. Don't worry about this pulling on the top, it's fine. You want your lining to be attached around that curves here. So when you put your hand inside, you don't pull out the lining each time you use your glove. So we're going to just line up those edges. We can clip them in a couple of places. Take this to the machine. You're going to stitch in those two places here. Okay, I have my lining stitched in those two places here to my external pieces. Now using that opening in the lining, you're going to turn everything right side out. If you are happy with everything, you're going to line up the top edge, roll that seam slightly towards the lining, and then you're going to clip that seam. Now you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to top stitch around that top edge using about 5 mm seam allowance.
turn everything inside out. Then you're going to line up those folded edges together. Here we go. And we're going to close that opening, stitching about two millimeters from the edge. Or if you prefer a nice, neat finish, you can just close the opening by hand using a ladder stitch, whichever method you prefer. Now you can just turn everything right side out again and give your oven glove a final press if you have to. If you would like to see similar project, make sure you check out the video where I show you how to make an apple-shaped pot holders. See you next time! Stay crafty, friends!